here at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Red Deer on this Pentecost Sunday, a time in the church year, every year, where we celebrate the beginnings of the Christian faith on that special event uh, so many years ago as uh, the Holy Spirit uh, enters in a new way into, uh, uh, into our life, into the church's life, and into the proclamation of the gospel. And a special welcome also to all of you who are watching and participating at home on YouTube. Uh, we hope that you enjoy worshiping with us today. Now our order of worship for today is the Tree of Life service, and you'll find that on your screen, uh, both at home and here. Uh, we will be celebrating Holy Communion as well. And for those of you at home, you are welcome to join us. We do welcome all who are baptized in Christ Jesus our Lord to join with us. Simply have some bread and some wine or grape juice ready for that particular point in the church service. Now let's begin our time of worship together as we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday. We'll begin with the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Would you please rise with me as you are able. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, O risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, O risen Christ, that your Holy Spirit comes to us in grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace in your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ, cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. For freedom Christ has set you free. Thanks be to God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. join together in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the word. The first lesson for Pentecost Sunday is from Ezekiel chapter 37, starting at the first verse. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. 
Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 104, beginning at the 24th verse. Read responsively. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The second lesson for Pentecost is from Acts chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet. The prophet Joel, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, when everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
gospel for this Pentecost Sunday is from the Gospel of John, chapters 15 and 16. Lord, Jesus said, Now when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi kids. Today we're celebrating Pentecost Sunday. It's a time in the church year. It has a big name, but really what it means is that God comes to us in a whole new way. And comes to us in a way that's called the Holy Spirit. You see this banner here? It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And it was very important to know way back then with the disciples and the other people that followed Jesus that God's Holy Spirit, Spirit, was going to be with them. Because after Jesus rose from the dead, he went back to heaven. And we celebrated that last week. But this week, we know that Jesus gave something in return so that we can know that Jesus will be with us all the time. And that's called God's Holy Spirit. The Spirit, part of God, that will be with us. Uh, with us, in our hearts, we, we believe in our hearts. But will be outside of us as well. In other words, God's Spirit is everywhere. Everywhere that we go, every place that we, we, we go to eat, we go home, we go to school, we go to the playground, we go to the arena, wherever it is that we go, God's Holy Spirit travels with us. Because that's the promise. When we're baptized into Jesus, that Holy Spirit comes with it. We receive the Holy Spirit. Now, it's not a spirit that we can see just like air is not something that we can see. Sunlight, even though it gets pretty hot, we can't really see sunlight either, but we know what it does. We can see what sunlight does. We know what air does. We can see what air does. Especially when there's a wind, even though you can't see the air moving through the trees, we can see the trees moving. God's Holy Spirit being with us also uh, causes an effect, gives us faith, inspires our faith, keeps
keeps us in our faith so that we believe in Jesus all our lives. It's a very special day. It starts the whole of our church moving forward all those years ago. And our prayer on this day is that God's Holy Spirit is with us in the same way so that our church can continue to move forward. So today, remember this phrase. God said to an Old Testament prophet, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And we're a part of that, all people, God's people. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, now may you, O oh God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, guide your word to our hearts, teach your word in its truth, and help us to live as your people each and every day. Amen. May be seated. <clears throat> Today <clears throat> we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, the day of the church year's calendar when we remember the birth of the new way of Christ. It takes the message of the risen Christ beyond just a handful of disciples. The Holy Spirit promised by Christ comes on the disciples, on humanity, in a new and pervasive way. All the way back in the time of Joel, Joel, the Old Testament prophet, tells of a time that he foresees coming when, as God says, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days I will pour out my spirit. And here at this Pentecost scene, we see this new thing taking place and they hear that, that sound like a violent wind coming. And to be sure, though, to be sure, we have to realize that the Holy Spirit has been active and present before this. This is the same Spirit that broods over the waters in Genesis chapter 1, at the very beginning. It is the same Spirit that the psalmist writes about and sings about. It's the same Spirit that the angel Gabriel talks about with a young virgin Mary, telling her that she would bear a son. Oh yes, the Holy Spirit has been busy. The story in Ezekiel that Karen read earlier is a story that is a remarkable story of a valley of dry bones saying to the prophet, you, you, Mortal, you tell these bones what I tell you to tell them. And so he turns to this valley of dry bones and he says what God tells him to say. And there is f flesh and sinew that builds up and there's skin that goes on to the skin. And he says, now tell the breath to happen. And they breathe. Now, just in case Ezekiel thought he did it all himself, he must be reminded that it is not his word that did all of this. It is the word of God and through the spirit of God, breath of God, even dry bones can have life. And that is the nature of all of this. The Spirit, the Spirit descends on a group of, of disciples, and we, rem we must remember who these, these disciples and these followers are. And let's not omit the women that were always with them. You know the ones, the ones that were first to the tomb of Christ on the day of resurrection. But on them, this spirit comes down and gives them voice and speech, but not their own. 
That's the remarkable thing. These are Galilean fishermen. They perhaps knew the Aramaic that they spoke as the common language of Israel at the time. Maybe they could speak a bit of Latin, the language, the language of the Romans, or, or the Greek, the Greek that came before the Romans. But that's pretty much the extent of their linguistic expertise. And yet when this crowd there for the, for the festival of Pentecost, the feast of the first fruits, the, the, the first of the harvest of wheat, it was one of the great festivals that all of these men would journey to Jerusalem for to honor the law of Moses and to bring their offerings and their thanksgivings to God for the first fruits. There's an interesting connection. That here at the birth of the harvest of the new gospel, taking place at the same time as the celebration of first fruits, Pentecost, the 50 days after the Passover, things happen. This small group of sometimes scared, sometimes reluctant, sometimes insecure group of disciples and others, this community of followers and believers in the risen Christ must now become the real presence of Christ among the nations. But in case they are still scared and reluctant and insecure, this Holy Spirit bids them to put all of that aside because now they know the risen Christ and they have this presence, the one, the one that Jesus promises in our gospel text today, the advocate, the one who will come to provide. The one who will come to give them voice. And so they know that no matter what is going on around them, within them is this Spirit. Around them is this Holy Spirit. And leading the way into the world with the message of the risen Christ is this Holy Spirit. Jesus tells them that he must go in order that this advocate, this spirit of truth, would be able to come. And now so that this message of the risen Christ doesn't stay into, in that one little place, the Holy Spirit comes and drives the message. And whatever these disciples lack, the Holy Spirit will give them. Whatever the need is for the moment, this Holy Spirit will give them. Whatever is necessary that they may not have within themselves at the time, the Holy Spirit will give them. I am sure that even fishermen have some great talents that are untapped. These will come out. But what they lack, the Holy Spirit will provide. And every one of that, that whole raft of regions of people that are gathered there in Jerusalem on that day, whatever language they have, they hear it in their own language. Not because of a bunch of fishermen that might all of a sudden drop into different languages, but because just as with Ezekiel, the Holy Spirit is there now to increase in them all of the gifts and the talents that they may not have themselves that is necessary now to drive the church into the future. And to move this gospel message out into the world because now, as Joel had promised, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, on all people. What seems to have been at one time just in that small location with all of those wonderful prophets of old, 
Now this spirit drives the message of God, the love of God, the proclamation of God through Christ, the risen Christ, now goes out into all the world. And it must. And so the spirit comes. And it touches hearts and minds. Let me quote something from Luther's explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. And all of you good Lutherans out there will know this by heart, I'm sure. I wrote it down because I don't trust my memory. Here's his explanation on the third article, which refers to the Holy Spirit. Here's what we ought to think about this Spirit. Luther writes, I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith, just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. The Holy Spirit does this. He goes on from there to say that the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives, raises me up on the last day, and, keep, and, and gives believers eternal life. What a job description. That's a lot of work. But then I think when we look back, not just in New Testament, but in Old Testament, the Spirit of God has always been busy from the very beginning till right now. And the Spirit remains alive. This is the same Spirit that now enlivens us, that now spurs us in our faith to do just what the disciples have done. This advocate that Jesus talks about, he will breathe into them, upon them, later on in the Gospel of John, after the resurrection, so that they are prepared to go out into the world. This is the spirit of truth whose message of Christ speaks against the darkness and the death of this world. Jesus says that the ruler of this world is condemned and all that is sinful and evil condemned along with it, along with this ruler of the world. And so the Holy Spirit both testifies to and glorifies Christ since the Christ is the message of love from heaven. All other messages must be put against this message of heaven itself. And whatever message fails when you put it up against the message of Christ, then that is not the message of God's own heaven. So the Spirit testifies to Christ. Whatever spirit of this world does not match it, does not belong. The Spirit provides what is needed for proclamation and for the sustaining of the church, whether these gifts are those gifts that are drawn out of us, that we have born within us, that are left kind of, I guess you could say, inert, unused. The Spirit will bring those out. Or whether they are gifts of the Holy Spirit that are new to us, that can only be given by heaven itself through the Holy Spirit. These gifts are for the benefit, not of myself individually, but any gift that I have is for the benefit of the whole of the church. The fire of this Holy Spirit on Pentecost is the same power of God that both testifies to the word of Christ in us and is our sustainer. To inspire faith and to sustain it. To inspire it so that we, like the disciples, go out into the world to make disciples, to proclaim the word to those, the thirsty, 
who need to be given this water of life. So all of the gifts of God for the people of God. May we use them wisely and even our wisdom a gift of God by the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's join together in our confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and our dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Our God of life, the earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth again. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaim proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill today the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise their gra your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And God of all faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our own hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day. Be with those that whom we know who suffer and those who are dying. Especially those we know in this congregation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love. Fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts that we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Sustain us in body, mind, and spirit through this COVID isolation, and bring us together again in the community of hopefulness. Sustain all of those who work in our hospitals, doctors, nurses, staff. Keep Safe, all of those first responders, firefighters, police, ambulance. Now hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As we know, O oh God, that you hear the prayers of each of our hearts, hear now the prayers of our hearts, even those prayers too deep for words, as we bring before you all of those we know who need our prayers. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. As we come to the time of our offerings in our worship, uh, we give thanks to all of you for your gifts. Uh, for the work of this congregation and of the church at large, whether that is in time, talents, or possessions. We know that they come from the heart out of love for God and for Christ our Savior. With that in mind, uh, we pray that you continue to give generously to the congregation, uh, that our work here in this community and uh, the church at large may continue. And you can continue to give your offering through regular mail, automated deposit, or e-transfer. Now let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ, Amen.
continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, holy God, mighty and immortal, through Christ our Lord who on this day poured out your Holy Spirit upon your sons and daughters, both young and old, breathing new life into dry bones and renewing the face of the earth. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and the last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people and promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and draw us back to you. Now in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share in this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts and at last feast forever at the Supper of the Lamb. Amen. Now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Hallelujah. Now for those of you at home, take and eat the body of Christ given, broken for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God of all creation, in this meal you have bound us to yourself. At this table we have tasted your goodness. Strengthen us by your grace that we may, might more perfectly praise you and more faithfully love one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now our almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
may be seated for a couple of quick notes. Uh, first, uh, first of all, from uh, our uh, congregation here, we realize that our church office sends out uh, weekly email and regular mail with announcements and notes. And as well, there's a monthly newsletter. If you're watching online and would like to receive uh, these notes and announcements or the newsletter, and we haven't gotten your email, uh, please, by all means, uh, phone our church office at 403 340-1022 and uh, let us know what your email address is and be glad to send out the information and, uh, and have you out on our mail out list. Now, please rise and go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.